All right, we're looking at 7.5 quantitative analysis in chemical uh, answering equilibrium systems. So far, we do not have a way to tell if a system is simply at equilibrium, if it's going to adjust itself to the left or right or not at all. So what we're inter introducing now is something called the reaction quotient, which is Q, and that's what uh, this is going to help us determine what we just discussed there. So it's going to measure the relative amounts of products and reactants present during a reaction at a particular point. And the reaction quotient will aid in giving us a direction that is likely to proceed at a given pressure and temperature. And we'll kind of try to omit the pressure and temperature for uh, these questions. So the reaction quotient Q, when we have a general equation, it's going to relate to our quotient Q like so. So you can see how we have our coefficient is going to act as our exponent for each of these and uh, we do need to have a concentration so these units here are going to be in big m or moles per liter so sometimes for a question you might have to put it into a moles per liter first and then proceed so q gives the amount of any product concentration to reacting concentration at any point in a reaction and when we're actually at equilibrium our q value and our uh, k value are equal to each other so for a particular system and temperatures the same equilibrium state is attained regardless of starting concentrations the value of Q indicates how close the reaction is to equilibrium and in which direction it must proceed to reach equilibrium. Let's talk a little bit more about Q compared to K. So Q, when they are equal to each other, we're at equilibrium and there's no change. Well, there's sort of two other situations. Firstly, we could have a situation where Q is less than K, in which case we're going to proceed towards our products. And then, of course, the opposite is going to be true where Q is greater than K, and we're going to proceed towards a reactants. Now, I've actually come up with a bit of a simpler way to represent this so you can remember it, and it involves actually switching these two around, which is kind of unconventional. Most of the time, Q comes first. But you can see in a second, I'm going to switch this around, so we're going to use the K first. So um, let's determine the direction of reaction. Uh, so the value of Q, we, we sort of just discussed this here, so... Again, that's just rehashing what we just discussed on the previous slide. So let's take a look at an example here. And uh, for this one, we're just using A and B just in general. And I don't actually give you the K value, but what I do give is the concentration of A and the concentration of B. Now, there's going to be a picture accompanying this example. There it is. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about the... Uh, uh, the red dots in the pictures and then we've also got the blue dots in the pictures and all we're going to do is kind of compare these to each other and that'll let us come up with a value for uh, comparison values here so as we proceed our plan is we're going to compare q and k the first thing we're going to have to do is actually calculate k so let's go ahead and do that so here is how we would calculate k and we've got a value of 0.43. Now we're going to use that in each of these examples. So to, to do the Q value, let's do the first one here. We're just going to do some counting. So in picture one, we've got eight blue dots and two red dots, right? So eight divided by two is four. So now we can compare the four and the 0.43 and come up with a comparison. So here's what I've done is I've actually switched K and Q around. For, and I've done this for a reason. So again, we've got k at 0.43 and we have q at 4 so clearly k is less than q and so where the reaction is going to proceed is it's going to proceed to the left now why i've switched this around is because now this uh, greater than less than sign actually is pointing the direction that our reaction is going to proceed so if you put k first and q second then the greater than less than will tell you which way it's going so it's pointing to the left so this reaction goes to the left I thought that was handy. Here's our next example. We've got uh, uh, our uh, blue is three, red is seven. Divide those out, we get 0.43. We actually have them equal to each other. So that reaction would be at equilibrium and would not change. For number three, we've got four divided by six is 0.67. So comparing, again, this one's 0.43 and this one's 0.67. So it's going to, uh, Q is, K is less than Q, so it's going to go to the left. Eh. And then the last one here, 0.25. This one is going to go to the right. Notice the direction to the right. So that's going to be important when we get to our ice charts. That's going to tell us if the reactants of products are 
doing uh, the plus or the minus x value. So let's get to an example here. So for the reaction, and that's a nice simple one, we just have one product and one reactant, and we're actually given the K value, and there is a temperature here, and we do have a couple of concentrations. So all this one's saying is, is this reaction at equilibrium? So our plan is we're going to find Q, and we're going to find K, and we're simply going to compare. So for Q, our comparison is, those are our two concentrations, divide them out, you get 2.5. And now we have enough information to, to compare. Because remember, we got the K at 0.21 and we have our Q at 2.5. So it looks like this one is going to proceed to the left because that one is less than that one. So we're going to go in that direction. This question doesn't ask to proceed. It's just asking what's, you know, which direction are we going. So this one's actually answered now. Now this one's going to be the whole us doing all the calculations the temperature is actually kind of important here so it's 250 degrees celsius we've got carbonic acid decomposing into carbon dioxide and water and notice that i'm giving you guys the k value and we also have initial concentrations of 0.4 and that goes for everything so everything has a concentration of that so there is our equation and i do want to point out that water is in the gaseous state here simply because it's at 250 degrees celsius so we're going to be able to use all of these things in our q statement so there is how we're going to calculate the Q. We're going to plug in all of the 0.4s, and we got one on the top, one on the bottom, meaning our value is going to be 0.4. So now that will allow us to compare the Q at 0.4 with the K value, which is 5. So therefore, K is greater than Q, right? 5 is greater than 0.4. So this one's going to proceed to the right. So it's going to proceed in the, uh, in the products direction here which means these are increasing and this is decreasing so we do need to indicate this in our ice chart so here's our ice chart there's my equation up top so our initial concentrations are all 0.4 and here's our changes we've got our minuses and our pluses and then there's our net so once again we'll take our k expression here because now we know k we're done with q we're on to k our K was given at 5. Okay, so just notice here we've got this value down here. And then each of these ones here are up top. And we're now we're going to need some algebraic skills. When you multiply this out, so all I've done is I have foiled out the top here. And that gives us that stuff there. And here we have cross-multiplied these two values against 5, giving us 2 and minus 5x. Um, next step is just going to be to rearrange everything, collect like terms. There we go. And now we need an X value. And we got a problem here because this one's a little complicated. It's got a square value, which means we're going to need, need to use the quadratic formula. Now, frankly, I don't care how you do this. So what you can do is you can simply Google a website that will do the quadratic for you, like this one here. And you can see I have typed in the values that were given, the 1, the 5.8, <coughs> and the negative. And I've hit calculate, and I get two answers. Well, the fact is that my negative answer doesn't really make any sense. My positive answer is what we want. So we've got a positive value here of 0.3. So we can go back to here and we can sort of finish off our question now. So therefore, our so our carbonic column is 0.4 minus x. So 0.4 minus 0.3 gives us 0.1 molar. So there is our concentration of the uh, carbonic acid at equilibrium. And the other two are going to be the same, if you will, because they're the same numbers. So we've got an addition one here. So this one's 0.7. So because water is the same numbers, it also has a concentration of 0.7. Okay, so next example. At 300 Kelvin, sulfur dioxide reacts with water to form hydrogen gas and sulfur trioxide, and we have a Q value given here as well. And we want to calculate the concentrations at equilibrium if all substances have starting concentrations of 0 0.50 moles per liter. So we do have our given concentration. So first step is there is our balanced equation. And we're going to calculate our Q value. We're going to plug in all of our 0.5s. And we'll notice that this time it's equal to 1. So our comparison is that 0.1 is less than 1. So we're going to be proceeding to the left. So these ones are going to be increasing here. So let's reflect that in our ice chart. There's our equation. 
There's our initial concentrations. We're going to the left, so our reactants are increasing and our products are decreasing. And there are our values for at equilibrium. So we can calculate our K. Well, sorry, we know our K, so here's how we're going to do it. We know our K is 0.1, and we got all this stuff here. So I guess another way to write this, because you'll notice the terms are the, uh, the same here, top and bottom, is we can just simplify it by putting that. Now, what you might notice, and if you're good in terms of mathematics, is that we can actually simplify this expression by doing the square root of everything. Because by doing the square root of everything, we're, in essence, getting rid of the square root, or the squared signs there. We're really just taking the square root of 0.1 kind of proceeding. So the square root of 0.1 is 0 0.316. And notice that we've gotten rid of the squareds here. Now it's just a matter of doing our cross-multiplication step. So these two values multiplied by each other, going there, and then this value going here, collecting your x terms and getting, uh, I, I left out a few steps there, but it's just collecting like terms and dividing by x, and you get 0 0.26. So to finish this one off here, we can uh, sub our value in for x, and we get our concentration of the sulfur dioxide, which also is the same as water because they have the same plus values there. And over on the uh, uh, product side, we're going to be subtracting. So we get 0.24 molar for each of those ones, because again, they're the same values. Uh, last one here, in order to study hyd hydrogen halide decomposition, a researcher fills an evacuated 2.0 flask with 0.2 moles of HI gas and allows the reaction to proceed at 453 degrees Celsius, pretty warm. So there's our balanced equation. We're going to find the concentration of everything at equilibrium if K is equal to 0.25. So our plan is that we are going to repeat our problem. Well, first thing we've got to do is we have to deal with the fact that we don't have a concentration, but we can simply come up with a concentration here. And that's going to be our first step. So there is our concentration of the HI calculated at 0.1 molar. So to reflect our changes there, we've got 0.1. And notice that we've got zero for the two products because uh, this one has yet to proceed. And so our changing is going to be based on our coefficients here. So two and a two. And of course, our products are forming. We don't need to do the KQ comparison because there are literally none to start with. So it has to be forming here. So that's why we've got our plus X's. So there's our stuff. And now it's just going to be plugging in our values and doing our uh, mathematics. You can double check my math. Hopefully I got it right. When I get to this point, I needed to use the quadratic uh, you know, equation solver to get my numbers and it came up with that for my x value so i'm just going to go ahead and plug that back in and again these two are the same here so that's why we have that value so there's our concentration of those and our h i is going down so it's, it's a very small one so this reaction is proceeding to the right